Hi everybody and welcome back to Tales of Wanderlust. I'm Cass and if you're curious how to install 12 volt plugs into an Airstream base camp and the basics of how the base camp electrical system works, stay tuned. So let's talk about the benefits of having 12 volt plugs. So these plugs do not come standard in a base camp. You will have to install them. If you do have any sort of comfort level with electrical, it's really easy to do. I installed them with my dad the first month I owned the base camp. So I really haven't used the base camp ever without them. And I use them all the time. I have seen other base camp owners that put the 12 volt plugs either up front near the tank heater switch, up on the kitchen counters, or in a variety of other places. So I put it right here because it's very easy to do with the electrical, but if you're creative or if you have some of that electrical experience, you are able to put them in a variety of places inside the base camp. So why are 12 volt plugs so beneficial? Well, they let you use different types of plugs while you're off grid. For basics, when you're boondocking and you don't have shore power or a generator, you're running straight off the batteries. That's called DC or direct current because how I think of it, it's coming directly off the battery. So you can't run your standard plugs. That means you're limited to just the USB plugs within the base camp. And for me who works full time, I need to be able to charge my laptop. So I installed the 12 volt plugs so I could run my laptop, while I'm boondocking and not have to worry about any sort of inverter. We'll get to the inverter after because about six months after buying the base camp, I did end up putting an inverter in, but I still only use that on a limited basis. And I use these 12 volt plugs for most of my work and most of my charging needs. So what can you use in a 12 volt plug? First thing is the WeBoost. So I have my WeBoost wired up through this bench and then the 12 volt plug is right here. If you're interested how I have that hooked up, I'll link to the video below about internet. I don't have it permanently mounted, so I do have to go and take it on and off the roof, but I do leave the actual booster and the plug permanently here, so it's really easy to plug in. Now the most common item I am using the 12 volt plugs for is my work laptop. So I actually have a 12 volt plug for my HP work laptop. So on the one end, it's just your regular 12 volt plug. And then on the other end is this piece. And this is the HP portion itself. So I will link to this set below. It comes with a variety of these adapters and it works for a lot of your Windows laptops. It does not work for Mac, so I'll show you how to charge my Mac laptop and iPad in a moment, but this just simply plugs right into the side of the laptop and it charges it just like a regular outlet would. So for me, I charge my laptop this way 99.9% .9 of the time. The nice thing about having a 12 volt plug is that it pulls the electricity right off the battery, straight to the 12 volt plug, and then straight into the laptop through this adapter. So it's one of the most efficient ways you can charge your laptop while boondocking. So how do I charge my Mac laptop? The Macs, at least this one, I think it's a year or two old, they charge via USB-C and you can get a USB to USB-C charger, which would go right into this plug, but it takes forever to charge. And it really doesn't work very well because the USB outlets are not 12 volt, they're five or eight volt, I can't remember exactly. So it's a much, much lower voltage. So in order to charge my Mac, I also use the 12 volt plugs, but I've never found a 12 volt adapter that goes right into the Mac. So instead what I do is I use one of these car chargers and it has the USB-C plug on the back side of it. So then I just plug the car charger in there. I take the regular USB-C cord that comes with the Mac and I charge it that way. It's not quite as powerful as the 110 volt outlets. So I do find that sometimes if I'm running video editing software and a lot of different things on the Mac and I'm really using a lot of battery power, the 12 volt plug actually won't keep up. 
and I will use the battery faster than it can charge. So in those instances, I do have to go back to the 110 outlets, which means I turn on my inverter. But that's pretty rare. I usually don't have to do that. I also try to charge this during the day while I am working. That way the solar's coming in, it's helping replace some of the power from the battery I'm using. And then the Mac is also charged and ready to go in the evenings. These car chargers, you can get USB on the back side of it as well. So you have four USB outlets that work off your DC, but if for some reason you need more, you can just plug this in and give it a go. You also might notice that I have two 12 volt plugs here. The reason for that is if I ever do need to run my WeBoost, the WeBoost takes up a whole 12 volt itself. I still need to be able to charge my laptop. So that's why I have the two of them and I use both of them quite often. The other thing is my two hotspots, my AT&T and Verizon hotspot, they charge off of the 12 volt as well. And I just use one of these car chargers to use their power cords with. So really in the end, basically everything I use to work full time runs off these 12 volt plugs and I am using them constantly. So for a maybe $20 upgrade, this is the best modification that I've done to the base camp so far. So let's talk a little bit about RV electrical and the basics and talk about AC versus DC. So in your regular house, you have what's called AC power, which is alternating current. In an RV, you absolutely can get AC power. And most of the time that comes from being hooked up to shore power. So when you have your RV plugged into either a friend's house, an RV park, you will notice that everything in your base camp works just like it would in a house. You can plug your computer or your appliances into the regular outlets and everything works like normal. However, the minute you pull that shore power off and unplug your RV, you are now running off of the DC direct current. So that is the biggest difference shore power is AC and everything works batteries is DC and that means only your USB plugs and certain appliances work so what works when you are boondocking off of DC so your sink will work this works off the water pump which is DC power so you will be able to run water your stove is propane so you'll be fine as long as you have propane your fridge I have the Novacool two-way, which is an AC electric or DC electric. It knows automatically which one to run off, so you don't have to set it. But when you're boondocking, you can use the fridge. The older models have a three-way Dometic, which runs off propane. So if you're boondocking, just make sure it is on the propane setting, and then it uses DC power to run the fan and so forth. You can also run your Truma when you are boondocking. So that is your heater and your hot water. Water. If you are plugged into shore power or a generator, you can run it off AC power. Just put it on the electrical setting. In order to boondock, you need to put it over to the propane setting, which will then pull DC power to run the fan and propane to fuel the heat. That is also your hot water, so you can take hot showers while you're boondocking. The other thing that works when you're boondocking is all of your USB outlets. So there are two here and then there are two in the storage cabinet right here. And these you can just use a regular USB plug, plug them in and run it like normal. Your ceiling fan also runs off of DC. So you can use this while you're boondocking as well. On the high fan setting, it does use a good amount of power. So I have actually killed my batteries in the summer by having this fan on high for multiple days. Keep an eye on your battery level when you're boondocking, especially if you're running big things like your fan, your fridge in hot weather and making sure your batteries don't go below the desired percentage. So real quick on the batteries, if you have lithium batteries like I do, then there's a battery management system in there. They will kick off when they need to kick off, but I can use in theory 100% of my battery capacity. We'll put a little asterisk on that because for your technical people, you know the BMS is going to stop it before it gets to a point of damage. For AGM batteries, you do need to make sure your batteries don't go below 50%. If they do, it will slowly wear down the batteries over time and they won't charge to full capacity anymore. I did that with my original AGMs and within a day I would be able to kill them because they weren't holding the capacity they're supposed to. So I didn't know the 50% rule when I first started RVing. Make sure if you do have AGM batteries, 
don't go below 50%. The final thing that will work off of your DC or 12 volt system are your tank heaters, which the switch for them is right down here. So these are the 12 volt heaters that are on both your black and your fresh water tanks. If you have water in those tanks and you are camping in below freezing temperatures, then you would just switch on these tank heaters to keep them at a roughly 45 degrees and keep your tanks from freezing. My one tip on these is they do pull a lot of power. If you're boondocking and you're trying to use these, it might kill your battery much faster than you would expect. So keep that in mind. You might not actually be able to run these while you're boondocking for too long because your batteries might not support it. It all depends on how much solar you have to recharge your batteries and if you have a generator or not in order to charge them back up. Even though they're called 12 volt tank heaters, they do still work if you're plugged into shore power. So if you are winter camping and you have electrical hookups, don't worry about the power consumption. You can absolutely use these and keep your tanks warm. So what doesn't work off your 12 volt or your battery system when you're boondocking? One of the things which I don't have is the microwave. So I opted for the extra storage and I have the door here instead of having the microwave. But if you have that, that's not gonna work off your battery. The other thing is your air conditioner is not going to work unless you're plugged in. So this does not work off your DC and you cannot use your air conditioner when you are boondocking unless you have a really powerful generator. And then the biggest one that you definitely can't use while boondocking is your 110 outlets, which are your regular looking house outlets. The other thing to keep in mind that's unique about the base camp is that we have these front power strips up here in the kitchen. So these power strips, even though they have USBs in them, they don't work off DC. It's almost like a power strip where you have these different plugs and then on the end is just a regular cord that plugs into a 110 outlet. So even though it has USB and it looks like it should run off the batteries, it really doesn't. You do need to have shore power or the inverter on in order to run these. So let's talk about the inverter. I have a 2000 watt inverter that I installed about six to eight months into living full time in the base camp. What the inverter does is it takes takes the power from the batteries, the DC power, and it converts it over to AC power. So you can run certain AC appliances while you're boondocking and off your battery power, just like you're plugged into shore power. There are limitations to that, and it depends on what wattage of an inverter you have. So for example, I have a 2000 watt inverter because I wanted to run a crock pot. I needed a larger inverter in order to do that. Side note, the crock pot, while it's cooking for eight hours, takes a lot of battery power and I would be down to about 30% battery and that would take the solar a long time to recharge. I have since retired the crock pot, but I still use the inverter on a limited basis. So depending on the wattage of your inverter will depend on what you can run. If you have an inverter in your base camp, you will be able to run the regular 110 outlets, such as these pop-up outlets. So if that's important to you, you can easily do an inverter. If you wanna run something like the air conditioning, your inverter isn't going to be strong enough and your battery bank isn't going to be big enough in order to support the AC. You will need a very large generator for that. However, just for the 110 outlets, it is really nice to have the inverter in there then if there's a specific appliance that only runs off 110, such as the crock pot or a Keurig or any of those kind of kitchen appliances, you can just turn on the inverter and run those outlets off battery power and it makes it feel just like you're plugged in or just like you're using your kitchen at home. So one thing to keep in mind with the inverter is when it's on, it requires power just to be on and to be converting the DC over to the AC. So even if you have it on, but you're not running anything else, it's still going to be pulling power. So if you turn the inverter on and forget to turn it off, you could actually drain your batteries just by having the inverter on. My recommendation and what I personally do is just turn the inverter on when you need it. As soon as you're done with the 110 plugs, turn the inverter off and save yourself some battery power. So when it comes to DC, what you have to keep in mind is you're running off your batteries. So you have a limited amount of power. Whatever your batteries are is how much power you have. And then you can be recharging those batteries through different means. 
I, for example, use solar. So I have the rooftop solar and then I have two deployable panels that plug into the front. Those recharge my batteries as I'm using the DC system. So I can use a good amount of power and I can work and live full time in here off of the DC system. No problems at all because I have enough solar to recharge it. If you don't have solar, you can use a generator to recharge your batteries. The other way is through your tow vehicle. So the seven pin, which plugs from the base camp into your tow vehicle does pull some power and it will charge the base camp. It is enough that when I did take my lithium batteries down to zero one night, I was able to plug into my truck, get a little bit of power going through with the engine running, and then the sun came out and the solar charged the batteries up enough for me to be able to use it. I then drove to an RV park and I plugged in and I charged the batteries back up to full. So there are a few different ways that you can charge your batteries. I find solar to be the best and I love it because it's easy, it's attached to the roof and I never have to think about it. I just keep an eye on the batteries and then how much power I'm using to make sure that I'm being conservative enough with the power supply and that I'm not going to make my batteries run down. You may wonder why I'm sitting in the kitchen to talk to you about batteries, but in the base camp, the batteries are located underneath the kitchen cabinet and you access them through here. My inverter is also in here as well. So what do I have that is upgraded from the basic base camp electrical? So I have upgraded the regular AGM batteries to two lithium batteries. So I have two of the golf cart shaped 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries. They do fit into the battery box that comes with the base camp, but it does require some modification of cutting off the top of the box. So it did require a good bit of work, but they do fit in there. I also have a 2000 watt Victron inverter, and then I upgraded to a Victron battery controller and a Victron solar controller. That is the additional changes that I've done to make the base camp electrical more adequate for my full-time lifestyle. So how do you install these 12 volt plugs? It's actually really easy to do. The first thing to do is to buy the 12 volt plug that you'd like. I went with a simple 12 volt single plug and I'll post a link below for that. I have seen others that have one 12 volt plus additional USBs or the two 12 volts built into one panel. There's a variety of them out there. So pick the one that you like and with the plugs that you'll use. Then what you have to do is drill a hole into the cabinetry for the 12 volt plug to fit into. I used a hole saw attached to the end of my drill and I just drilled right into the wood. You do have to be careful and make sure that the truma hoses are moved out of the way on the inside. That way you're not drilling into the heat vent from the truma. But it's really easy to do, little bit of sawdust and cleanup, not hard at all. Once the 12 volt plug is in there, you're going to have the positive and the negative wire that you need to hook up. Why I chose this location is it is right next to the fuse box. So within this fuse box, there are the 110 fuses as well as the 12 volt fuses. And there are additional 12 volt fuses in here that are empty that you can wire right into. So I took the positives from these 12 volts wired into one of the empty fuses, and that's what you do with the positive wire. As for the negative wire, you need to ground it somewhere. So for me, what I did is I ran it back to the water pump, and I grounded it with the water pump in the back of the bench. This bench does get pretty hot with the truma being in there, so I did pull the wires up and I ran them along the top edge of the cabinet. That way they're not right on the truma and I'm not worried about them getting too hot. All in all, it took maybe 20 minutes to install these. It was really easy to do. I did have my dad there because I wasn't experienced in wiring these up. So it was nice to have him there to walk me through it. Anyone with basic electrical knowledge will be able to hook this up for you. So hopefully that answers a lot of your questions about the electrical system in the base camp and the difference between the AC and the DC systems. Thankfully, I'm parked at my boyfriend's so I can have the whole base camp torn apart and show you guys how everything is set up without having to worry about Napoleon and Jasper running around. This is a really basic overview of RV electrical systems. There's a lot of different ways to get power. There are additional power packs you can get, such as the Goal Zero or the Jackery 
unit. So it can really get a lot more complicated, but this was meant to really just be the basics to get you started and give you some of the terminology so you can continue doing research from there. So if you have any additional questions, feel free to comment below. I will try to answer them to the best of my knowledge. I am no expert when it comes to power. I just know the basics and I have hired people to install my lithium batteries as well as the inverter and make sure all that wiring was properly done. So thank you very much for checking out this video and we'll see you next time.